Sometimes with the big three lifts, the squats, deadlifts, and the bench press, it's hard to quantify workout to workout and week to week how much load you're actually doing, especially if you're varying up your sets and reps and weights, and sometimes you do more, sometimes you do less. So if you're trying to compare your progression, either workout to workout or week to week, um, there's a calculation that you can use to actually quantify that and make sure that, you know, even if you vary the lows and the sets and the reps, that you're still progressing how much load you're taking on in total in each workout. And this is probably gonna look a little nuts at first, but we're gonna go through it. So I have three different weeks here. So I have, if we're talking about squatting, week one of someone squatting, week two of someone squatting, week three of someone squatting. And each time they did four sets here, four sets here, five sets here. And then what you do is each set, you multiply the reps by the weight. So we have four times where we multiply the sets by the weight, and then you come up with a finite number at the end of that. So even though there's a 10 here, there's a five here, there's a set of three here, we're coming up with a final number that's gonna represent how much load was in that workout. So then when we come to week two, we can compare that. So even though, again, it's kind of all over the map as far as the weights, the sets, and the reps, if you follow that formula of multiplying each set by its reps and weight, you're gonna come up with a finite number adding up all of those sets at the end. And then you can see that this load is plus 460 pounds off of the prior week. Ideally, we try to go for 10% per week, but this number seems to be a little bit more than that. If the person handles that load, you know, it's kind of just something to note, but you can kind of keep track of how much load you're putting on yourself each week. And then from there, from week two to week three, I changed it up to show you a little bit of a different scenario where you know, the weight here is 140, so they max out doing one rep of 140, which is the highest weight that they lifted. But if you calculate in totality of what went on in that workout, it's actually 80 pounds less than what they did in week two. So if we're talking about a total strain on the body, week three's workout was actually a little bit less than week two. So sometimes you get a little bit hung up. If you maxed out, you automatically think that like, oh, this was the hardest workout. But if you're looking at it from a big picture load management kind of standpoint, this one was actually the most difficult in total on the body. So that's a way to kind of think about, you know, when you're trying to hit goals of certain weights, trying to hit goals of, you know, mastering different movement patterns, you want to make sure that you're not doing it too quickly. And this is a way to actually quantify that objectively.